So today's talk, I'm, I took the liberty of slightly modifying the TED acronym, and so I'm going to talk about Google Earth's technology, um, talk about the course that I developed for the writing program. I'm going to talk about um, how this technology can be used to, t to talk about uh, entertainment as well as education, and then I'll finish up by talking about um, how my students have incorporated uh, the issue of design into our class. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the technology. Google Earth is a globe that's accessible through the internet. It's draped with satellite and aerial imagery, and it also comes with multiple layers of geographical information, as well as other types of information um, that includes text, video, and uh, even links to outside websites. Most people's experience of the technology goes something like this. Oh, there's my house. Um, but what I wanted to talk about uh, in this class was how you can use Google Earth to do more than just fly to your house. Uh, I used my background in the geographic technologies to develop this class, uh, freshman writing course for the Thompson Writing Program. And we talk about uh, topics including the democratization of geographic technologies. Um, and what that means is only experts, people who were trained in the use of remote sensing or geographic information used to have access to it. Now anyone with access to the internet can take a look at the, this remote sensing and this geographic data. We talk about the debates that have, have arisen around issues of security and privacy. Um, and we talk about the impacts Google Earth has had on the realms of science, art, uh, humanitarian response, uh, disaster response, among others. Next, thank you. Um, when we talk about Google Earth's impacts on science, one of the things that it allows scientists to do is communicate with each other. So what this is showing is that one scientist may have viewed a pattern in the program. This happens to be, oh, I need to stop waving my hands. Um, so that was a pattern of um, an animal tra traveling through the water. But it could be a pattern of anything. A scientist observes it, he clicks on the capture mechanism in the program and goes ahead and emails that to his friend with which he wants to communicate, saying, hey, take a look at this. I just noticed X. He or she does not need to be an expert in geographic information to be able to share what um, he's seeing in the program. Another way in which Google Earth has affected science is that scientists now have another way to access the public, a very much wider public. There are at least 400 million people that have downloaded Google Earth. And so users have access to visualizations like this. This is um, a visualization of deforestation worldwide, where the height gives you a sense of how much deforestation has occurred. And if it, if it, well, red is deforestation, green is reforestation. So communicating science to the public. Another thing that access to this remote sensing data has done has actually been to affect how some people do their science. So there's a recent article called Armchair Archaeology, where archaeologists are now using this program to scope out images all over the world for these telltale signs of um, impacts on the landscape that they can then go on the ground and follow up. Google Earth has also had impacts in the art world. We're able to tour galleries, and we're also able to experience artworks. This particular example is of the Prado. What the Prado has done has, to, has been to digitize some of their artwork with what they call gigapixel technology and make that available online. So you can fly to the Prado in Spain, go to the museum, click on it, and have access to any of these 14 artworks. Another thing that we talk about and read about in class is Google Earth's impacts on humanitarian issues. 
Um, we re read quite a bit about the crisis in Darfur and talk about the crisis in Darf Darfur layer in Google Earth, but my students have also studied other humanitarian issues. Um, you may not realize it, but the Millennium Development Goals have, an, have a layer in Google Earth, as does an NGO called WaterAid. Um, and there's an, another layer that's all about human rights called um, Every Human Has Rights. The impact on disaster response has re really been something that reaches beyond academia into the public. So, um, for example, Google Earth has been used to respond to a variety of disasters, among them hurricanes Katrina and Ike, um, to uh, cyclones, and to earthquakes. So in the case of hurricanes, we can follow them before landfall, and then also use Google Earth as a planning mechanism uh, to view and respond to the dis destruction that has happened. Um, uh, a more current example is of Japan. Within days of the um, earthquake and the following tsunami, the images that were cap captured by the satellites had been provided, um, uploaded, so that you click on any of these geographical points and you get more information. Um, you're able to zoom in and see the destruction. Sendai, where um, that little dialogue box is, is one of the main foci of the destruction that occurred in Japan. Okay, so um, moving on into the realm of entertainment, one thing that we talked a bit about in class uh, was this concept of mediated voyeurism. So we used an ex excerpt from a fairly recent book, and we talked about how um, we consume images of other people's lives, either through uh, the mass media or the internet on a fairly regular basis. We brought it into the scope of our class by talking about these best of street view websites. So I hope this may not be showing as well as I might have liked it, but essentially this is an image of someone who's fallen into their trunk, okay? And there are all kinds of images posted on these best of street view websites, and so we use them as part of a conversation about um, whether Street View, a component of Google Earth, illustrates this concept of mediated voyeurism. Other ways in which Google Earth can be used to examine entertainment that my students have pursued as part of their own individual studies include its impact on travel and tourism. Um, they've examined the range of countries that have provided their own layers providing information about um, tourist des destinations within their countries. Uh, they've also <coughs> examined how Google Earth can be used for recreation. There is everything from hiking trails to surf spots, uh, detailed um, with descriptions about the difficulty of the area and accompanied by photos. My students have also taken a look at how Google Earth has impacted education, and the, the impact is really um, multidisciplinary. I'm just going to give a couple examples. Um, Google Earth has been used by geologists to help students understand geologic map interpretation. There are other views within Google Earth where you can look at either uh, sky, moon, or Mars, and so those kind of views could be used in support of astronomy courses. Google Earth has even been used um, by literature courses, and that may surprise you, but essentially uh, what teachers are doing is following the path of, of um, the story as it happens geographically. Okay, so getting to the, the final portion of the talk. One really interesting outcome of um, developing this course has been that my students have been able to design uh, some things as, as part of their final projects. So for example, one student a couple semesters ago um, 
thought that it was a great idea to match the information that you get in the catalog with geographic locations on campus so that you would have a sense of how your schedule was going to play out geographically, especially coming into campus. You know, if you're registering from afar and don't really know any of these buildings, that that would be really helpful. And so he developed this as one of his final projects in my course. Um, Another thing one of my students did, uh, he was looking forward to taking this course called Gothic Cathedrals. And there are tours of famous buildings available through the program. They take you all over the world and zoom into these buildings. Um, so he found this cathedral tour and thought that that would be a wonderful prep for brainstorming the types of cathedrals that they might develop in their Gothic Cathedrals class. Another thing that you can do um, with a program that's outside Google Earth um, is to develop three-dimensional buildings. And then those buildings can be loaded into the program. So one of my students, upon learning about that, developed a replica of his dorm. And now that is available for everybody to see on the internet, so Blackwell. Ultimately, um, developing this course has been a great adventure for me. I believe that it has really um, shown my students that there's more to Google Earth than they might have imagined. And I really hope that it has jump-started your imagination about ways in which this program may be used as well. Thank you.